Hi, I'm Deborah Kay. Join me on the journey into well-being. My quest is the natural health explorer. Together, we will uncover the secrets to living a high energy and vibrant life. It's going to be fun, so come on. Won't you join me? We had a compelling reason to pack up and head to Hyden in eastern Kentucky. From the outside, a simple town boasting a population of under 400 and centered at the middle fork of the Kentucky River. But we knew there was a special story nestled within this remote, rugged terrain. The story of pioneer Mary Breckenridge, founder of Frontier Nursing University, the oldest functioning midwifery school in the nation. Her story, as you'll see, is one of loss and redemption, of dedication and perseverance. But most of all, it's a story of a true Kentucky hero. Dr. Stone is the president of Frontier Nursing University. So some of the stories I've heard seem really arduous almost in that, you know, they get a call in the middle of the night, it could be the middle of winter, and I just envision this uh, trained midwife putting on her uniform, jumping in a saddle, and, you know, like bugles are blaring in the background, and off she goes to take care of a family. Well, the picture that you're drawing is pretty accurate, except there were no bugles. <laughs> If her husband can get here to tell us that she's in labor, then we will get to her, whether it's snowing or raining or whatever. And, you know, in those days, the way, only way to cross the river was to jump in on your horse. It was rough. It was rough. There's stories of sliding down hills and jumping in the river and realizing, oh, my horse is swimming. While midwifery is often focused on the expectant mother, Mary Breckenridge was committed to the well-being of the entire family so the baby could arrive in a healthier environment. I was curious to learn more about Mrs. Breckenridge and her commitment to Eastern Kentucky. She got this idea in her head very early that there were needs in Southeastern Kentucky that were not being met. Mrs. Breckenridge dedicated most of her life to the families of Appalachia, but tragedy struck numerous times for her. She lost her first husband within a year of their wedding. She married again and had two children who also did not survive. A daughter, Polly, died shortly after birth, and her beloved son, Brecky, died at the age of four. This changed everything for her. She felt that if there had been better health care for the children, perhaps her children could have survived. And she decided at that time that she wanted to devote her whole life to improving the lives and the welfare of children. I got to meet with some of the students on this historic campus and found that they shared the same passion of making a difference for families in their own hometowns. So I think there's really something special and unique about Frontier. What was it in particular that drew you to come here? Um, well, I knew about Frontier for a long time. I worked in labor and delivery for 20 years and thought I had it figured out. I understood epidurals, I understood Pitocin, and once I got to where I really understood it, I realized that it really wasn't necessary at all. And um, a lot of my friends were looking at midwifery as well. Um, the community was asking for it, and so it's been my journey to, to be here. It's a passion. It's something I, I feel like I have to do no matter no matter what. There's nothing going to hold me back. So it's here I am. It's a calling. It's a calling. Women remember their births until their dying day. 80-year-old women in nursing homes talk about the birth of their you know, their children. If you make that an empowering experience, they are much more confident parents, which then raises more confident children. It becomes a self-perpetuating cycle. For one Kentucky native, the presence of Mary Breckenridge was felt from a very early age. Mary Breckenridge's presence was always felt in my life. Mm. Um, I never went to doctors, I went to nurse practitioners who provided care in the outlying clinics like Big Creek and Beach Fork. Um, so I was always surrounded by their presence. And growing up, um, I idolized the nurse practitioners because they would come into schools, they would give education, and it was 
a position that I wanted to be in. And so many years later, <laughs> here I am finally fulfilling that, that dream. Growing up, when I asked where babies come from, you know, like small children will do, I was told that they come from the nurse midwife saddlebags. <laughs> and I believed that, I, I sincerely believed it. So when they arrived at a home, they'd have these very large packed bags and they would carry them into the home. Well, when they arrived for a birth, many times the children would see these big bags, but their image was the nurses came with this big bag and then we had a baby. <laughs> and so one little boy asked one of the nurses, particularly Betty Lester, and said, um, gee, Miss Lester, can't you bring me, bring me a baby brother next time in that bag instead of a baby sister? <laughs> With more than 1,500 students located in every state and in seven countries, Mary Breckenridge's model is still working. We are teaching our students her model of care, and they are taking it to their communities, um, mostly rural and underserved. We really draw from those populations across the United States. Graduates hit the ground running. They really have a mission to serve and they're really passionate about the work that they do. So we're very proud of that. They inspire you. It's not just a school. You're not just getting an education. They inspire you to go out and to make a difference in your community and to help those who need help. What was Mary Breckenridge's biggest passion? Hands down, no doubt, it was the children. You know, she only got into midwifery because she said children are the most vulnerable before they are born, during their birth, and shortly after. So we must have nurse midwives who can take care of them during that time. You can't take care of a child unless you take care of their family. You have to take care of their mother. You have to take care of their father. And you have to take care of their whole community. So um, hands down, it was the children. So before I left Kentucky, it felt right to me to come to the Lexington Cemetery and pay my respects to Mary Breckenridge. A woman who is a true pioneer for health care. A woman who dedicated her life to helping people that many overlooked. Her story is an inspiration. Her legacy is felt by thousands. She inspired many other brave pioneers who continue to make a difference across the world every day. Now we are all called to carry this torch, to carry her vision, and dedicate our lives to making a difference. Like Mrs. Breckenridge, may we all rise above the trials in life and emerge to blaze new trails, to truly be pioneers for healthcare. <laughs>